Greetings. Welcome to joining me, and you can reach me at how do I do this zero one at yahoo.com. Um, today we're going to go into our second lesson. Um, we're going to use the line tool, and we're going to just play with the line tool, the properties, and the effects. We're going to look at some different options you have on your menu um, for your line tool, and we're going to play a little bit with your layering, um, a little bit with a gradient and a little bit with transparency so, so that you can see and understand not only what the transparency can do, what the layering can do, but also how it's going to affect the overall picture. Um, so without wasting too much more time, please uh, open the program, click on if you're actually listening and watching and playing along with this on your computer, you can go ahead and open your computer program. If not, just watch the video and enjoy and then go back and review. Um, please take notes. You will have, uh, obviously you can see right here, I'm using the uh, WordPad program. You can open that and take your notes with, uh, by clicking on Start, click on Programs, click on Accessories, and then click on WordPad. This is universal in every newer version of Windows, so please use this program. Um, it's really going to be advantageous if you take notes, follow along, write down what I'm saying in your own words, and learn from practice. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead. Um, let's put something on the canvas. We're going to work with the layers, and we're going to see what we can do with that. We're going to just use the curve line tool and some of the properties within the curve line tool. We're going to play with the color just a little bit. That's more in the... Um, referencing to the gradient and what I've already done so far on the canvas. Um, we're going to play with a little bit of the effects. And these effects simply are effects that you can use within the properties of the curve line tool, not the effects on the drop down. There is a difference. Uh, be aware of this. There's just so many options and so many different things that you can do within the environment. It is literally mind boggling. So please understand um, that we're going to be just using the curve line tool. We're going to be playing with some of the effects you can have within the properties on the line tool. We're going to play a little bit with the layers. We're going to play a little bit with the properties on each canvas layer. In other words, where we put the paint or where we put the color on the actual canvas. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, switch over to that window now. Now, please bear with me. Um, <clears throat> right now, when I open this window up, or at least pull it up so you can see it, you can actually see the window and the, um, the menu boxes that I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is rather than sit there and tell you so you can't see it, I'm going to switch over periodically, and I'm going to show you what I'm changing. Okay, so please follow along. This is uh, an image in the paint window. Just so you know, it's a static paint window. This isn't actually the program. This is just what you're looking at so that I can point to something with, with the mouse here and I can give you a reference. You'll notice I chose over here on the left, I chose blue. You'll notice on the right, I have opted to add by clicking on this little box right down here, the green box. Um, it'll pop up on your screen and it'll say add layer. I've added three layers on top of the background. I have added the second layer and I've made it visible. I put a gradient in the third level or the third layer rather and I clicked it which makes it invisible. It's still there. It's just something you cannot see until I actually put a check, check mark in this box right here. Once I check this box it will be visible on the canvas as we get going along here. And then the fourth layer right now is just a, just sitting there as a spacer. Now you can add layers in between for spacers. You can add layers in between for different text. Um, you can go through and do so many different things. Primarily what I'm getting you used to and explaining to you is how stacking of these layers is going to make a difference in what it is you're looking at. And to give you just a quick example here, let's go ahead and step on over here to the line tool. 
Now we're back into the program. You can't see this, but I'm on layer two. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have the color blue. Now, the toolbar here on your on your menu uh, bar here across the, the bottom of your your menu bar and your main menus. Now, if I want to click on this, I can um, drop some of these things in here and drop some things out that are visible or not visible. You can customize your your view here if you want to. I prefer leaving it stock because I'm used to using it this way. And please understand and remember that you do have shortcut keys. F4 will get you to your properties. Can, excuse me. Um, control shift N will add a new layer. Control shift delete will delete a layer. Um, you can also merge layers one at a time. And if you want to save your photo or the canvas that you're working on, you get something that looks the way you want it to. You'll have to do what they call flattening. Um, and that's with this right here. Flattening an image means that you're going to scrunch up and you're going to take all the layers and you're going to move them down to the background layer, which means you will no longer be able to edit what you've already done and move down to the background layer. So be aware of that. Once you've flattened it, once you've merged a layer, that's going to become permanent. So if you're not sure about the effect, leave the layer alone until you're ready. Um, you can make each layer either visible or invisible, and you can play with the effects until you're ready to to save it. Anyway, without further ado here, let's put a little line here. Now, you'll notice on this line, you can't see it, or you may not be able to see it. Perhaps you can see this on my mouse. Um, as I move the mouse over a section of the line, the line has not been placed or set. What that means is, is I've drawn the line, but there's still um, access points to the actual point of the line. And if you can't see it, I will demonstrate this by left-clicking and dragging on the line. And you can see that even though I've placed the line, it's not set. That means that I can physically take these different sections that I can grab with my mouse and I can change the curve and the effect of how the line is actually shaped. Now, if I want, oh, I see there I set the line. Let's go ahead and do that again. Now, there's all kinds of stuff you can do here. Not the least of which is changing the direction of the line. And let's go ahead and look here. You can change the width, if you will, of the line. Now, all of these are variables. Before you set the line in place, you can place the line. But once you set it, you're stuck with it. So be very careful about setting your line. And make sure you're on a layer that you can either erase or not erase. Much easier to work with a layer and then undo something on a layer rather than putting it um, on the background layer and then having it stuck there. Um, this makes this program so much more versatile. Now we can click on the style. You can click on flat arrow. You can click on filled arrow. And you can click on rounded. You'll notice here the rounded edge versus the square edge. And these are just some of the things you can play with. You also have the option to fill. Anyway, we'll pick this up in the next uh, video. This is going to be a long series, so please bear with me and enjoy.